Good morning. I'm Michelle Corson with Kern County Public Health, and I am here to provide you with an update on COVID-19 and the impact it's having on Kern County. In Kern County, as of April the 30th at 8.30 a.m., we have 893 cases. 332 are isolated at home, 524 are recovered. While 96% of Kern's positive cases have either recovered or they are at home recovering, which that is fantastic news for us to be able to give you today. Unfortunately, we have experienced one additional death in Kern County, which brings our total deaths to seven. We want to continue to thank our residents for adhering to the governor's order to stay at home. We know the weather is getting warmer. Uh, we want you to go outside. We just want you to practice social distancing when you do. And you've been doing fantastic, Kern County. We are so appreciative to our residents, to our businesses. And this is just a time to remember that we are all adhering to the governor's order together, and we definitely can continue uh, the great work that's being done. We also want to remind you, this is just a really good time to remember the general ways we can stay healthy just as individuals. Um, staying active is so important. Physical activity is one of the most important things you can do for your health. Whether it's taking a walk, riding a bike, or while you're at home, there's so many free online options for you to get exercise and get your family involved, your children. Uh, we just remind you the importance of staying active. Eating well is so important. And choosing fruits and vegetables and whole grains when you can, rather than foods that are high in sugar and salt and fat. Stay hydrated. It's getting warm here in Kern County. We're used to this. We know that the summers get hot. But reminding you when you are out exercising, stay hydrated and really try to focus on water rather than sugary drinks. And then finally, get enough rest. You know, uh, according to the Centers for Disease Control, adults should get at least seven hours of rest a night. I definitely need to hear that. And we just encourage everyone to get enough sleep. All of these things can just help us achieve our optimal health, uh, which is gonna impact our immune system. And it's just a great reminder that we have such control um, over these steps we can take to just maximize our health right now. And I am very pleased because I have a guest with me today. I have Megan Pearson, who will be joining me uh, regularly in these uh, press conferences from now on. She is the Chief Communications Officer for Kern County, and she will be addressing issues that fall outside of public health's specific information. So with that, I am going to invite Megan up, and then I will return to open up the Q&A with our media friends. Megan? Thank you, Michelle. Uh, as Michelle mentioned, I'm going to address a couple of items that are not specifically um, or wholly public health related. They are more countywide in nature. So the first of those is opening up testing centers for COVID-19 testing here in Kern County. So starting next week, Tuesday, May 5th, we will be opening three COVID-19 testing locations throughout the county. All three locations will be free to residents. The first one is the 5th District drive through and that's at the Richard Prado Senior Center. The address is 2101 Ridge Street, and that's just off of Mount Vernon between Kern Medical and Heritage Park. The location is a drive through only, and it will operate Sunday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. The second location is in Bakersfield at the Kern County Fairgrounds. Building four, if you've attended the Kern County Fair, you'll know that is the building where all the photography and artwork is. Uh, that location is 1142 South P Street. The location is not a drive through It is walk-in appointments or walk-up appointments. And they will operate Tuesday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The third location 
is in Mojave, and that's at the Mojave Veterans Memorial Building. Uh, the address for that is 15580 O Street. Uh, this location is also a walk-in appointment uh, and will operate Tuesday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Again, though, all three locations are free to residents. Uh, they do require an appointment. So starting this weekend, probably late Sunday, kerncounty.com and kernpublichealth.com will have web portals for you to schedule appointments and information. Uh, if you can't use that platform, will become available this weekend. Um, they do, again, they do need to have your appointment scheduled. Uh, you'll need to bring your ID with you. The, the beauty in this, the, the really important thing that we want to report is that this increases our testing ca capability by 400 tests a day, or nearly 400. Um, and it's important, again, these are free to our residents. Previously, you had to see a physician or go to an urgent care where you had to pay high fees to have the test done. So now these will be free. We have every single day of the week covered and translation services will be available on site. So we're hopeful that this removes every barrier that someone may have had in the past to being tested. Uh, we'll provide you more information in the coming days. This is a rapidly evolving uh, scenario with uh, multiple locations. Again, this is just the start. And as we go on and any further needs are identified or the needs that of these existing locations change, we'll provide those updates. The second item is uh, something that's been mentioned a lot lately about the development of a committee or task force related to reopening Kern County. Um, so during the last Board of Supervisors meeting, the board proposed a creation of a committee to assist public health as they review the governor's orders related to business and returning to work. When the governor makes that decision, so let me say that again, the intention is to have a committee in place working now to allow a swift and smooth reopening of our economy when the governor decides to lift the order. The committee of the board, with the support from the CAO's office, will do the following. They'll work directly with local industry sectors to ensure communication and exchange of information on state directives related to reopening business and restarting the economy. Those industry sectors will have the opportunity to provide specific policy recommendations for the board to consider in relation to the state's guidelines on reopening. The goal obviously being to promote safe and responsible business development and job creation. And finally, this group will provide support to Kern County Public Health uh, with recommendations on implementation of state and federal orders as they apply to essential and non-essential business activity. The goal is to open as many, business, as many businesses as soon as possible as in the safest and most responsible manner possible within the state and federal orders. The work's underway now. Uh, the CAO's office uh, is working on pulling all of these industry sectors together. And it's important that we acknowledge that we're working with our local economic partners and business partners to ensure that your government is soliciting your input and working to find solutions to your concerns. So those are the updates that I have. I'll turn it back over to Michelle and field questions when you're ready. Great, thank you, Megan. And I now would like to address my media as we continue to practice social distancing. We have them calling in and I need to unmute them. Yes. And I need my media friends to hit star six. And there is a suggested order that I asked you to follow today. And if you can hear me okay, I am ready to hear your first question. Can you hear me, friends? Yes, Michelle. Good morning. This is Ralph Bailey with Current Radio. Hi, Ralph. Hi, Michelle. There is a woman in Dallas who is flouting state guidelines. She's torn up a cease and desist letter. She tore up a restraining order. Dallas police were in her hair salon, but no arrests were made. I know you guys spoke with Taft Mayor Dave Knorr after they unanimously voted to try to get up on their feet. What would you all do? What would the public health department do if Taft resident John Smith opens his barbershop 
on Monday. And are you guys familiar with the drug Remdesivir? Does the county have a position on it? And is, do you have any idea when it be available here in Kern County? Great questions, as always, Ralph. So let me start with the Taft uh, situation. We did. Uh, myself and my director, Matt Constantine, had a great conversation with the mayor of Taft yesterday. And we are looking forward to working with them to prepare to open safely. And the conversations have begun. We appreciate all of our cities. They have been phenomenal through this entire process. And as we receive guidance and we work with our cities to reopen, uh, that's what our intent is to do. It's also a time for personal responsibility for our residents and all of our businesses to continue to adhere to the governor's order. Uh, in regard to the other exciting thing you've brought up, uh, Dr. Fauci did make an announcement last night um, regarding the, the drug that you have asked about, remdesivir, and he has announced that there is new evidence that suggests that this viral drug is effective at reducing recovery time. However, we are excited, but we are awaiting guidance on this, so for us to provide any more comment right now is premature. But we, I think, like everyone that has heard this, this is great news. Uh, we all want to hear news like this, but we're going to wait to hear the guidance of how that is going to play out and, and hit our medical community. Uh, and I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Sure. Next question. Michelle, this is Mike Hart from 23ABC. Hi. Um, Michelle, at first I have two quick ones for you. First, uh, the public health department's response to that letter that was sent uh, to the board of supervisor by dozens of, uh, it was signed by dozens of uh, different local uh, officials, restaurant owners, calling the shutdown unconstitutional and the county needs to rescind that order. Could you comment on that? I'm going to let Megan come up and talk to you about that. Okay. So, Mike, thank you for the question. Uh, what you're referring for, to, for those who don't know, is there was a letter received by the county signed by several local attorneys and local business, um, like you said, that suggests that the order is unconstitutional. And what I would remind everybody is that the county is following the governor's order. And so we have turned this letter over to county council, and they've weighed in on that, and they're reviewing it. Um, so I will let county council speak for themselves. I believe they've made public comment on that, so we'll let that stand. Um, but the, the piece we want to clarify is that the county uh, is following the governor's order. The, this is not an order that came from our public health department, nor is it an order that came from the CAO or the Board of Supervisors. So it's the governor's order that we continue to follow. And I don't know who this is for, Megan or uh, Michelle, uh, but it regards what you just mentioned in the three new testing sites, up to 400 new tests a day. I'm looking at uh, today's uh, dashboard that shows about 3,700 test results still pending, another 400 on top of that. Uh, is there any way to speed up that process, or are we at the mercy of whatever technology is in place to get those results? Hi, Mike. It's Michelle here. Uh, when it comes to the pending tests on our dashboard, just to quickly summarize, because there's a lot of confusion around this, uh, when a test is ordered by a medical professional, they are required to inform public health that a test is going to happen. On the other side of that, when a lab gets a result, positive or negative, they are supposed to inform public health. We find it is quicker that we are getting the positive tests and oftentimes not as quick that we are getting the negative. However, we cannot assume it's negative, so then we must backtrack and contact each of these testing facilities to confirm that it is indeed negative. But let me make something very clear. Additionally, the lab, when they have a result, they are contacting the medical provider. The medical provider is telling the patient that's a whole different line of communication. And so just because we have pending cases at the public health uh, system, that doesn't mean that the patients are waiting to be informed. So we will continue uh, to work as hard as we can to get those pending tests resolved. Uh, so uh, as we move forward, that, that's what we can commit to our community. 
I'm sorry, real quick. And are those labs here in Bakersfield and Kern County, or are they outside our area? Uh, it varies. They all, uh, it, it changes on a daily basis. But the samples are all collected here, and they are submitted to labs uh, that are located in various places inside and outside the county. Okay, thank you. Of course. Next question. Good morning, Michelle and Megan. Fiona Dager from Channel 29 here. Um, of the six people who are being labeled as COVID-19 deaths, has public health actually confirmed that these people tested positive for the virus, or were they just labeled as COVID-19 based on their symptoms? So for a public, for public health to announce a death related to COVID-19, we rely on the medical uh, community who makes that determination on if this was a COVID death. So every doctor involved, uh, in some cases the coroner, they deem both their determination that it's been a death as well as the clinical determination that's been made by a test. And then that is reported to us. Next question. Hi there, Michelle. This is Karen Hua with uh, KGT 17 News. Um, I understand you've recently been working with um, a uh, with legal aid uh, on the East Coast in regards to how to reveal more information uh, without violating HIPAA laws. Um, I understand that timeline was generally by the end of this week. So uh, my direct question is, can you confirm at this point for example, how many cases there are in the city of Taft or in the city of Ridgecrest? Or can you even say, are there any cases in the city of Bakersfield? So we are on, we are optimistic that by the end of this week, which is tomorrow, that we are going to start having some um, information that we can, as a department, review after speaking with the statisticians uh, on this and legal counsel in great hope that we can reveal this next week to our community. What that looks like exactly, I don't have that answer today because we are still determining it. So for today, the way that the data is being released uh, will continue. We just have, uh, we are hopeful that there will be a more detailed release of ge geographical um, information in particular uh, that we are able to report and make public next week. Okay, so uh, just a quick follow-up. If I may just politely ask you point blank, are you even allowed to answer or confirm, are there any cases in the city of Bakersfield? Today I'm not able to answer that question. Under the current guidelines we've been operating under, but that may very well change as of next week. Okay, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Any other questions? I have time for one or two more. Anybody not get a chance to ask a question that's on the line that wanted to? Well, I thank our media again for joining us and practicing social distancing. And we encourage our community to continue to visit our website at kernpublichealth.com. We are updating that regularly. Our, our call center is open seven days a week. And that can be reached at 321-3000. Thank you so much. We continue to ask you to stay home and stay safe. Thank you.